uh, Zhang won and won well. It was a brutal third round knockout. Spencer, before we get your take on what should be next for Joe Joyce, Tony Bell, you didn't hang around. Spencer, I don't think he beat the British champion right now. Wow. Because once that, that resistance was his greatest asset, guys. You know, I'm sorry to say that because I'm a big fan of Joe I love Joe He's a great fella. He's an absolute diamond. But without that punch resistance, guys, he is not above British level. I'm do you sorry. Think, do you think he should retire? I, re- yeah. I really do worry about him, Tony. Do you think he should re- retire? Guys, I mean, listen, I, I, it, that's not my call to I say know. that. Because, it, and it's not nice, I'm not good. But ultimately, I'm telling you now, he'll go in for the British title and he'll get hit because you can't miss him. You cannot miss him. He's not a guy who's got fluid boxing skills. He's not. He's not pretty on the eye. He's not. You know, he's someone who goes in there, guys. And let's be brutally and totally honest here. The way he wins is because he wears you out because you punch him so many times and you get tired. I mean, what kind of game plan in the grand scheme of things is that? No. Listen, mate. I'm going to beat you because you're going to hit me so much that you get tired. And that sounds really harsh. I'm sorry, that's the way I see it. And that's, yeah. how, that's how he is. Well, there's a lot of truth in what Tony's saying there, actually, because the punch resistance has seemed to have been gone. You know, since that Joseph Parker fight and we looked at the two Zelle Zhang fights, the punch resistance did go. Now, we thought it was down to dropping down too low when he weighed in at 18 stone for, for the first Zelle Zhang fight. And you thought the punch resistance may have gone then because he just dropped too much weight. But it became evident from the opening bell, really, that the punch resistance wasn't there and it wasn't quite what it was because that is one of Joe Joyce's, uh, Joe Joyce's main assets is that punch resistance and that... And that will to be able to walk through every shot and just wear and grind his opponent down. He's got an incredible engine. But but he did, didn't he, in the first fight? He did. He took a lot of shots. He takes a lot of shots. He was probably in with the most heavy-handed fighter that he's been in with. All that stopped him in the first fight was the damage that was done to his arm. Well, I don't know, actually, because if you go to... As, I know as early he was, as the second round, he was, he was getting rocked to the sole of I his know, boots. He, I know he was rocked, but the fact of the matter is he was still there. Mm. And in this instance, I, whilst I will never disagree with a fighter that's actually done it, and Tony Bellew knows what he's talking about, I'm not sure there's a heavyweight in the world that would have got up from that punch that Zhang hit him with. It was a beautiful shot. That, that, it was but he did get shot. up. But what you, we, we're looking at it from the opening bell and the shots that actually landed before that shot. It's like what I'm saying is that Joe, the resistance and the resilience to be able to walk through those shots just didn't seem to be there. He was getting rocked with shots before but, that knockout. But has, he was it, getting it, has, shots. He, has he been in, Spencer, with your knowledge, with anyone that hits as hard and is as, ha- as, as, as heavy-handed as Zhang, putting 20, 20, point, 20 stone worth of punch power behind it? It's... Daniel Dubois waxed hard enough. Yeah. And he walked, through, he walked through a lot of those shots and he okay. turned it around in that, in that fight. So, yeah. so that, that's probably the closest comparison I could give you. There's Rob saying, Tony spot on. I was at the fight. He wobbled big time. Yeah, he did because he was in with a guy that hits hard, but he was still there. I, 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 I don't, I'm not going to disagree with Tony, but I'm going to frame it in a different way, in the same way that Shane McGuigan fra- fra- framed it, which was any heavyweight in the world would have got knocked out by that punch, and yeah. the bulk of them would have been knocked out. Mm. Joe Joyce was trying to get up, and he was still in control of himself to some extent, but notwithstanding that, he was knocked down and beaten by by Jilly Zhang, clearly. The point is, is is he is he losing punch resistance? Have we have we not just seen something that we didn't really feel that we were gonna see, and possibly we saw it in the first fight and was only compounded in the second? Technically, Joe Joyce isn't good enough. He clearly struggles with southpaws, and I think that that was evident from the first fight, and and there's that lack of um, competition at southpaws that he's boxed before. Uh, is is that we you and I were at the fight when when Joyce yeah. beat beat Dubois Simon, and and both of you, I, I, I want an answer on this. I'd, are Dubois, Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce, are they not as good as we thought they might be? No, I think that, that that's a difficult one to say, really. Like, are they elite heavyweight level? Maybe not. I mean, Daniel Dubois is still 26 years of age. He's still got a lot of improving to do. But both he may get better. For big things, Spencer. Absolutely. And we still, Daniel Dubois may still get there. You know, we don't, we don't know how he comes back. It's about how a fighter comes back. I'm not back. sure anyone was really tipping Joe Joyce to win the world title. I think everyone was tipping Joe Joyce to make it really difficult for those that fought against him, that he was going to go in and he was going to be a handful for Tyson Fury because he's so big, 
mm. so resilient and has got such a good engine. But I don't think anyone really was saying he was going to beat Fury I think and he was going to beat Usyk. I think it was after the Joseph Parker victory, which was the fight before the Versus Sang fight, where he looked at it and went, he's going to be a problem for anyone. Because yeah. the manner that he dealt with Joe Joyce, um, Joseph Parker, the shots that he took and then that, that finish in the 11th round, you go, this guy's going to be a handful for anyone. And, sure. and the shots sure. were just bouncing off yeah. him. And, you know, from Zelly Zhang showed that at that sort of level. Zhang, Zhang, by the way, gives all of them problems as well. He's a tough guy to beat. Mm. Is there still life yet as a boxer for Joe Joyce? I think he can come back, definitely, but it's where he wants to come back and how he comes back, as in, like, we recognise now mixing at that elite level, and that's where he was because he was the WBO interim champion. He's not up there now. He's not up there in the top four or five, so he's got to go through that rebuilding process, and it depends what sort of appetite he's got to do that. It's an interesting one because I would always be very, very much in the camp of praising Matchroom because of... Uh, sorry, Matchroom, in the camp of praising Queensbury on their matchmaking because their matchmaking got Daniel Dubois to a world title. I have to be critical of the matchmaking against Zhang because I think that was a, t a fight that they didn't need to take. They yeah. were in the box seat for a mandatory shot against it for the WBO. They took a risky fight and then they lost that fight and then taking it again, mm. I obviously understand the reasons why they did but the, the outcome was worse in the second fight than it was in the first. You look at this and you say, sometimes fighters just have one another's number. Riddick Bowe did everything he could to avoid Lennox Lewis mm. because he knew that stylistically Lennox Lewis had his number. Yep. So he dropped the WBC belt in the bin and walked away from a fight. Whereas Joe's walked into the lion's den, walked into a fight against a southpaw that he doesn't really have much experience of. And somebody that really... All the writing on the wall was against Hergovic. It was it was high risk, low reward always for Joe Joyce. Yeah. The Zelly Zhang, the first fight, you know, when you look at it and you just think stylistically, the size of the guy, you know, look at his pedigree as an amateur, you go, for what? But Joe can come back round again. But the problem for Joe is, is that he is what he is. And we got a little bit lulled and carried away into the idea. And then Joe was at the front of the queue being carried away with it as well. That whatever hits me on the chin, I can walk through. And no one can. I mean, yeah. if Deontay Wilder hits you on the chin, you're going to sleep. And Joe Joyce would have gone to sleep against Deontay Wilder. I think just people didn't pay enough respect to mm. Zhili Zhang and what he bought. Because in the second fight, he had no fear. He walked into the first round, looked at Joe Joyce and went, so you're going to move to your left. That's all you're going to do, are you? Okay, now mm. I'm going to punch your face in. That was as, <laughs> yeah. it was as Spencer, it was as blunt as a that, wasn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, exactly that. Um, I think, look, a comeback fight, fight for both of them, Joe Joyce versus Daniel Dubois game, which sort of makes sense yeah. as a comeback fight for both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sad. I don't know about you, Simon. I left there on Saturday night. I was, I was sad for Joyce. I was, the, sad, I was sad for him. I was sad about the way it ended. It's the game that he's in. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's sure. a beautiful human being. He's, he's a is. lovely, Nobody lovely wants guy. Fight, but he's a big boy. He can accept it. He, he wanted this fight. And I just think that maybe he maybe he could have been talked out of it. Maybe not. I mean, Frank is a, is a powerful character. And if he didn't want him to take the fight, I'm sure he probably would have learned on him not to take it. But I think most people, most people looked at that first fight and felt, this is a challenge. Unless Zhang's going to be off it, and we really are attributing so much of Joe's performance to a weight loss, yeah. now you've gone the other way. Yeah, Joe, yeah. Now people are saying it was the weight gain. Yeah, absolutely. The weight gain slowed him down. Come on, Simon. Even you can show Joe Joyce a little bit of love here. I'm very fond of him. I think he's a lovely, lovely bloke, and I would want the best for him. But I also think that you know, there's, there's no benefit in sugarcoating things. What route things. back do you see for, for Joe Joyce? Depends where he wants to get to. And depends but where I mean, opportunities like are. an ideal comeback fight. Do you think Daniel Dubois is an ideal comeback fight? I think that's a difficult fight for him now. Yeah, but I mean, but both where they're situated with the heavyweight landscape well, and where it is. depends what they do with Daniel. Well, Daniel mm. if, 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 if Frank is able to get Daniel back into a manager WA, WBA position, why is he going to fight Joe? Sure. What, what, do you, what do we think? Zhang Fury? Is it is 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 it going to happen? I'm not sure Zhang Fury will happen. I think that you've got more chance of seeing Zhang versus Anthony Joshua than Zhang Fury next. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I think I, that, that I think that, that I think that that's an option that I think that Matchroom may be exploring. I know that Anthony Joshua would like that fight. They've got history. They boxed to get they boxed against each other in the quarterfinals of the 2012 Olympics. Joshua yeah. won that fight, and it was a close fight, 15-11. So I think that that's quite quite a nice fight. I think that if they can't get the Deontay Wilder fight over the line, which I think they're talking about now, February or March time, yeah. Anthony Joshua was looking for an opponent. Zhang would have that. Take it out to China. Him? It would be huge. Be huge. You haven't been to China, have you? 
hopefully I'll be going. That'd be nice, Spencer. <laughs> Spencer, thanks for, for your contribution as always. Uh, Neil from Wakefield. Jim, you said thanks to Simon for getting you that great seat at the boxing on Saturday night. Well, you could have looked a bit more happy at the fight. Saw you in the telly. You just faced like a smack backside, uh, says Neil from Wakefield. Did I? I don't think I looked all that glum. I was actually quite happy because I was sitting a few seats away from you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but thank you. All <laughs> I the saw same. the back of your head, which was far more impressive than the front. <laughs> thank you so much. You'll see the back of my head tomorrow morning at 10 as we are coming up to 1.